Listen, you young person, you. I've been motion tracking since before you were born, using things like Voodoo, Synthize, After Effects Tracker, even Blender's built-in motion tracker. And it's time for me to hang up the towel. I'm done. No more motion tracking. And as such, I've developed an add-on called Camera Tracker that is a photogrammetry-based approach. What makes this camera tracker different is it works with zooming shots. Blender's motion tracker doesn't do that. It outputs a sparse point cloud that basically shows you what it is you're tracking. You can then 3D model and line up objects, and more interestingly, it comes with a dense reconstruction, so a very dense point cloud so you literally have your scene. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to use it, half as a tutorial, half because I'm proud of it and a promotional thing. Take the camera tracker zip file, take it, drop it in, click OK. Once you do that, in the end panel, you're going to see camera tracker v2. Before you can use this, there are two additional steps. In the preferences under add-ons, you want to go to camera tracker, and because it has a bunch of built-in libraries, there is one or two things you have to do. Click this C++ redistributable. This is going to make your computer compatible with this add-on, so you literally just go through the install screens. Next, you're going to bring in this importer add-on. You're going to import the importer add-on. When you do that, you're going to see we have this photogrammetry importer. Thirdly, you can restart Blender just to make sure. Keeping this as simple as possible, if you have an image sequence, you can put that in here, but more likely you have a video where we can now convert it. So I'm going to take this footage right here, click sequence from video. So now you can see it's populated this image path with a image sequence. If you have your own, that's great. It's useful for masks and you can get custom. You're going to notice in this shot, I'm zooming in and out, which again, you can't track this with Blender's camera tracker. And you have to know if it is a zooming shot, you have to say, make it a zooming shot. The only other settings in this feature detection is you want to enable refine. This just says make better features and then shake, even though you might want to turn it on, is only useful if your camera's chaotic and you're rotating, like running, not just you're walking around. That doesn't count. And if you happen to have an NVIDIA GPU, click CUDA to make it run faster. Without further ado, let's get it. You're going to see this command prompt making you feel like a hacker. Can we get a matrix rain effect? You're going to see it's first of all going to extract features. The longer the shot, the longer this will take, and then it's going to match it, and then it's going to solve. So this will take like two or three minutes. And boom, just like that, we have our bang. What are you seeing here? You have a point cloud. By the way, you can already tell what is the ground, and you have this very, very tiny camera. Well, when I go into the camera view, you're going to see this is making the exact same motion and it is zooming in. In fact, if you go to the camera settings under a focal length, you can see that that is changing fairly accurately. As for ground alignment, so that the scene exists where it's supposed to, I'm first of all going to make my camera visually bigger so we can see what's going on here. And then I'm going to add an empty, which I can make as big as I want. I invert the selection, shift click so that I can control P parent. Now I can readjust the scene while the camera's still moving the way it's supposed to. And then you just kind of do a quick alignment. Now, if I take the empty and hide it, you can see we have our track, but it is nice and aligned to the scene. Meaning I can take something like a Suzanne. I'm going to put Suzanne on the ground, so something like that. And you can see our Suzanne is now tracked into the shot. And just to verify, I'm going to take the point cloud and hide it. And for our animated camera, you can go to background images and then import in your movie clip or that image sequence that was outputted. I play it and boom, perfectly tracked on. But we are not going to stop there. In fact, this was, this was child's play. In the sequence folder, that it created in the same directory as the video, you're going to see not only your images, but something called a database. If you want to track fresh, you want to delete this along with the folder. But if you just want to keep what you did before, then bring these files back in. This will skip the matching and extraction step. And this time I'm going to keep all the settings the same, except I'm going to enable Densify, which requires undistortion. So this will take my video, it will kind of flatten it out such that we can get a really accurate densification. And we are going to hit camera track. Okay, now very important undistortion step is going to create a new folder. In here, there will be a new image sequence. This is the undistorted one, which is important because this new dense camera solve is going to be in respect to this image sequence, which might have a slightly different resolution because it's stretched. And boys, we got it. I'm going to hide the sparse one. So you can see here is the dense one. If I go to rendered view or material preview, you're going to see it's our scene with a point cloud with the color attribute. If I play this, it will look exactly like the footage. If you feel like this is quite sparse, what you can do is you select it. I made a custom GeoNodes modifier that handles this point cloud. Multiply the radius by two. So now every point is twice as big. And you can think of this as a densification. If I make it quite bigger, you can see more into the background. And now for our alignment step, we already know how to do it. But this time it's super easy because I can really see what's going on here. Take your empty, invert the selection, shift click, control P to parent. And we're just going to do an orientation. Now we're getting a bit technical, but just so 
so you know. This point cloud comes with a custom material, so you're gonna see one called Visualizer. This just has the color attribute, which is the color. I could totally run this through something like a Diffuse BSDF. We now have a shadow casting with the perfect camera. Again, I wouldn't necessarily use this workflow, um, but it exists. Now let's talk about a different, potentially harder scenario where I want to track my face. This is important to know there's a difference here because my face is moving, but the background isn't. It's more so an object track. And it turns out you can actually trick Camera Tracker to think it's doing a camera solve when it isn't. So for example, here I have a piece of footage that the background's the same. I made sure to keep my head still. And what I did is I essentially masked this. I'll show you how to do that. But the important thing is we're gonna use the solver with this mask to trick it. You first take your footage, you drop it in here. So now you can see I have footage of me moving my head around and I want to isolate this. For something like this, a simple ellipse mask will do. Blender added a very convenient, I don't think this was there before, but a very convenient kind of gizmo tool over here. You take all of this and you keyframe the position, the size, the rotation, because my head moves over time. So if I go to the first frame, you can see I need to adjust it a bit, keyframe. Let's make this only 150 frames long. Okay, so here I did kind of like a half-ass job. It should be good enough. And just to ensure that it is, I can take this mask and actually shrink it using something called a uh, dilate slash erode. When I make it bigger, let's make that 30 or 40. Uh, you can see it indeed gets bigger. If I make it negative, it gets smaller. I now want to export my movie clip with this mask, which is as easy as saying set the alpha, the transparency to this ellipse. And now we've isolated this and you can really scan your footage. Sorry, there's something in my nose. It's allergy season. I can't get rid of it. We can export this as a PNG sequence to something with alpha or transparency. I'm going to set compression to zero to maintain the maximum amount of detail. And then finally in the render tab, I'm going to set this to standard so that the colors aren't whack. And this time I am making a, we'll call this a custom sequence. So we don't need to convert from a video because it's hard to get transparency in video. So we'll call the sequence underscore. Make sure this is also connected to composite. So this is what's going to be outputted. Control F12 and just wait for this to finish. So you can see it's outputting right here, our thing with a mask. And now we need to use camera tracker with this information. And with camera tracker, this time I'm going to select a sequence manually. So just open up the directory. It's not a file, but it's just the folder that we care about. In this case, it's this one. And very, very, very importantly, if you want to use the mask, make sure you click alpha. Otherwise, it will try to track blackness, which actually might work, but make sure you use your alpha. You can choose if you want to do the densification process. I think I will. Why not? And then while we're here, let me just talk about some settings I didn't talk about. So zoom is, do you have a zooming camera? I do not. Shake again is for like insane shake. Just do not enable this. Refine makes it better. Maximum resolution says if my image is bigger than 3,200 pixels, scale it down, don't have it take forever. And then the features is basically how many things roughly do I want to track? It's more so an upper bound. Matching, I would keep this as is. Smart just says, spend more time, get better matches by tracking both forwards and backwards and a few other things. And then overlap frames will say, look for matches 10 frames ahead and behind, but don't go 30 frames ahead. I'm going to enable CUDA, hit camera track, and let's see what this does kind of like in real time. It first outputted our masks, right? We didn't have this before, it just calculated those, which you're going to notice has the same naming convention. So sequence 001 as the original sequence. So if you want to make your own mask, but not like this, make sure the naming convention matches. Okay, solver is done. And now it's doing undistortion, which is right here. It's shocking how fast this is for the quality it produces. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Um, okay. And just in three minutes, I don't know if it's actually three minutes, but roughly three minutes we have, let's go to like a rendered view. We have my face and more impressively, it's a tracked face. So it's not the object that's moving. It's the camera around it. So we tricked it. I'm going to have the face kind of sit upwards on the origin, maybe at the nose. And now we have a nice uh, object, but really camera track. Just to ensure that this is doing what we want, I'm going to hide the dense point cloud, which is here. And then in the camera settings, I'm going to add background images. But, 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 remember, this is in reference to the undistorted sequence. So what you don't want to do is kind of just use the movie clip that we had before. It looks like it tracks and it basically does, but it doesn't account for the distortion. So what I would recommend is add a movie clip and we're just going to do the image sequence. So that's going to be in our custom sequence under undistorted images. We have the undistorted version. So hit a and open clip. And now you can see this is as perfect as perfect as you can get it. I can add my dense point cloud and you can see it perfectly overlaps. So 
almost like frozen in time though, but it perfectly overlaps. I'm gonna take my nose, do some proportional editing, because why not? View it, and now I got a long nose. This is what the people wanted. Let's make it even taller. There we go. That is the sauce. Look at that. I guess the main takeaway I want you to take away is you either put in a sequence or you convert one from a video. You say, is it transparent? Do I want to undistort and densify? And then once we actually start with our detection, am I zooming? Do I want few features, a lot of features? For the matching, how many frames ahead and behind should it look? And then do I have a NVIDIA GPU? That is it. We did it. If you're interested in just watching this as a YouTube video, link below. Very happy with Camera Tracker, currently actively developing it. This is the cheapest it's ever going to be. I'm not saying I'm going to make it more expensive but i'm saying i can i can't i could do whatever i want okay uh thank you for watching i know it's an ad but it's a useful tool it's a useful tool okay goodbye guys